Thank you, Powell. Welcome back. Uh, for those of you who joined us last week, if you're here for the first time, we love, love, love that you're here. And we are started the year off talking about what are we here to do? And it really kind of to start us off, and you can go back and watch last week's message, but today I start with a question is, why are you here? Why are you here sitting in these seats? Why are you watching from wherever you're watching for? And to answer that question is maybe because someone invited you, maybe it's because you want your kids here, maybe your spouse is dragging you, which leads us to another question is kind of, what, is there something that you are wanting more with your life? Maybe some of you are coming in the doors today or watching from wherever you're watching from is that you kind of feel stuck. You wish that something was different. Uh, maybe you wish you could quit fighting with your spouse. Maybe uh, you wish that your boss would trust you, which makes you it miserable going to work. Maybe you just don't like your job. Maybe your kid's not talking to you. Maybe you wish your kid would quit getting in trouble at school because you're tired of going up there. And you find yourself wanting something more because you're stuck. And where we're going today, before we kind of jump right in, where I love the story that we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about a guy who was tired. He was so tired of being stuck where he was in life. And he made some adamant moves in his life uh, for something to happen differently. And we're going to get there. But before we get there, this series that we're going, that we're in the first four weeks of January to start a new year is Hope Lives. And what this series really is all about is who we are as a church and what we are here to do in this community. Last week, we talked about uh, three mindsets for this year. You can go back and watch that uh, message. But we learned that the church is not for us, that the church exists for the world. We learned that you are the church. It's not about a building. It's not about rows. It is we are the church and we exist for the world. We exist for our community. And we learned that our simple mission, if you've been coming for a long time, you know this is our mission. If you're here for the first time, our mission is very simple and it is to inspire people to follow Jesus. To inspire people to follow Jesus. And one of all, you're going to hear me talk about these three words because it basically like a stool, a three-legged stool. These three words basically prop up our mission. It helps us accomplish our mission. And those three words are discover, experience, and activate. You heard me talk about it this past week that we are here. Next slide. We want to be a place where people discover the hope of Jesus, that there are people in this community in this community that don't like church, maybe have never been to church, maybe are de-churched, maybe have been hurt by the church, they don't trust the church, we want people to discover the hope of Jesus. That's one way we accomplish inspiring people to follow Jesus. And the second is, is like it. We want people to experience the hope of Jesus through the environments that we create. We can't change anyone's lives, but we can create an environment Use the gifts that God has given us to create an environment for people to experience the hope of Jesus. And then lastly, we want to be a place where the hope of Jesus is activated. That's that whole discipleship process that when we come and discover the hope of Jesus, when we experience it on a regular basis, that something is activated in us. And as we learned last week, as we're intensely devoted to Jesus, he's the hope is activated in us that it's not just on Sunday. We're not just coming to sit and hear a message. We're not just letting our kids be in an environment. We're modeling to our kids what hope is, how Jesus lives, how important it is to follow him. That Monday through Saturday when we, uh, when we interact with the people in our workplace, that because we've experienced the hope of Jesus, it's activated in us to where there's something different about that person right there. And I want what they have. You know what, I've kind of been living, I'm kind of stuck. I'm tired of fighting with my spouse. I'm tired of not having a relationship with my kids. That guy over there, there's something different about him because he trusts Jesus with his life, because he follows him. 
and he's intensely devoted to the things of Jesus, that something is different about that person. That's what hope living in us and through us is all about. And as a church, we want to be a group of people that hope lives in us. And because it lives in us, it, it flows through us to every person we come in contact with on a regular basis. That it doesn't just happen in these walls on Sunday morning. It happens at the dinner table when the kids are yelling and fighting. How do I treat them? How do they see me treat my spouse? How does my boss see that I work? Being intensely devoted to the things of Jesus changes something inside of us. And so those three words that we want people to discover the hope of Jesus, we want people to experience that hope through the environments we create and then as we are devoted to the things of Jesus, that something is activated in us, that we continue to follow him and something is seen in us and through us as we go about our week, every single day. That's what we wanna be as a church. And I love the story of where we're gonna to be today because it, it, it starts out where Jesus and his followers, they're headed to Jerusalem for the last time. It's right before Jesus is crucified. And Mark, he wrote one of the accounts of Jesus. There's four different accounts of Jesus. Mark was one of them. And where the story that we're going to talk about today was about a guy who was tired of being where he was. It starts off in Mark uh, chapter 10. It says, then they, they came into Jericho. Jericho was a city that was near uh, Jerusalem. And it was a city, it was a resort city. The elite, the rich, they lived there. It's where Zacchaeus lived, the rich tax collector that we know about. And Jesus and his disciples, they were kind of going into Jericho. Again, Herod the Great, the famous king uh, at the story of Christmas, he built this city, he rebuilt this city to be a place where the elite wanted to live. So that's where they were. And as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I want to stop right there. You got this guy who is begging. A guy it says the name of his dad, probably because people, if someone was blind, it was really traced back. People thought that it was a curse from God. So what a lot of people think is like, hey, Timaeus, he wasn't really a good guy. And so his son was born blind because that was a curse from God. And you got this guy, he's on the road, he's, he's begging, which was not like Jewish people were in the Jewish law. It said, hey, take care of people who have disabilities. Take care of people who have illnesses. But as you kind of can think, it's like, hey, uh, they just kind of waited on the side of the road. Waited on the side of the road, couldn't make a living because he had an illness. He had a disability. He couldn't see. And so he was, he was on the side of the road. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming, large crowd. So he pro obviously he couldn't see Jesus. Jesus couldn't see him. He began to shout, Jesus! Notice he didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He said, Jesus, son of David. He had heard over and over again the prophets being read in the synagogue of this Messiah that would come. And he said, son of David, because the, the, when David, the famous king, killed Goliath, when he was king over Israel, that's when they were most, uh, the, it was the best place for Israel politically. They weren't taken over by another uh, kingdom, another empire. And so it was talked about that this Messiah was going to come. So as Bartimaeus had heard over and over again, the prophets being read, talking about this king that would come, this Messiah that was going to save Israel. That's what he thought about. That's what he meant when he said, son of David and not Nazareth. He said, have mercy on me. He had heard about all the things that Jesus was doing, how he was healing people. Here's what Bartimaeus did. He made a move towards Jesus. 
He made a move towards Jesus. He was tired. He was tired of being labeled as the blind man over here on the side of the road begging for money, hoping he would get enough money for him to get some food. He was tired of that. And he had heard about this guy who was healing people. He thought it was the Messiah. And so in a moment where he was tired of being stuck, tired of being where he was, he shouted out. He shouted out, Jesus, have mercy on me. How many of us, if you're in a place where you feel stuck, maybe the very next step for you is make a move towards Jesus. Tired of living the way You live like I've been trying it my way and it's not working. Maybe you've told nobody that you feel stuck, that you feel depressed. You're tired of being where you are. Maybe the step for you is to make a move towards Jesus. But it goes on in the story. Many rebuked him, as you can imagine. Jesus is there, large crowd, wherever he went. Many rebuked him, told him to be quiet. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. Jesus is coming. He's obviously not going to heal you. You're just a beggar. You're blind. You've been that way all your life. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And the thing to know is when you make a move towards Jesus, you can expect some opposition. As you move towards Jesus, tired of being where you are, you can expect some opposition. You can expect some people not understanding because some idea, some label, someone is gonna try to keep you where you are. You may be tired of being where you are and you're desperate and you want to make a move towards Jesus, but someone's not going to understand. Some lie that you've heard all your life, some hurt that has been hurting you for a long time is going to try to keep you where you are as you move towards Jesus. You can expect some opposition. It's not about pros and cons. It's about moving towards the one who can give you peace, can give you strength beyond your comprehension. Because again, someone, something, some idea is going to try to keep you where you are. Who's going to want you to remain safe. Who's going to want you to remain comfortable. Because that's the easy way, right? I can imagine Bartimaeus, uh, he's not, he's not going to pay me any attention. But he made a move towards Jesus. Don't let the opposition keep you from making a move towards Jesus. Again, someone's going to say, well, that's probably not the right thing to do. I don't understand. Really? You're going to do that? The key is, Make the move anyway. And what we find as we hear and see Bartimaeus yelling at the top of his lungs, Jesus, have mercy on me. What happened? It caused Jesus to stop. Probably couldn't see where Bartimaeus was. But obviously he heard. He heard Bartimaeus wherever he was. Because again, it was a large crowd. He had 12 disciples. He had many followers that followed him everywhere. Then you had the crowd of people. So he couldn't see where Bartimaeus was, but he heard him and it caused him to stop. Caused him to stop. And as you make a move towards Jesus, he wants you to come to him. He wants you to come to him. It says he stopped and said, call him calling and so they called the blind man cheer up 
on your feet. He's calling you, Bartimaeus. He's calling you. And this is what he did. Throwing his cloak aside, we'll come back to that in a moment. He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do? Jesus asked him. Really? What do you want me to do? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And I love, this is very interesting to me. Very interesting because before he said, Jesus, son of David. But this, and that was recognizing that Jesus was the Messiah that had come. But this right here, Rabbi, Rabbi was him saying, Jesus, you're my personal Messiah. I believe that you are who they say you are. And he was making it personal. He came to Jesus and he says, Rabbi, I want to see And I love that throwing the cloak aside, the cloak represents his identity. Because again, as a blind man, that cloak, what did it represent? It represented what he covered himself with at night when it was cold. It represented what he put out as he was begging for money. People would probably throw money. It was who Bartimaeus was. It was the label that people put on him, that he was a blind man. And what this represents is he was throwing that aside. He was throwing his previous identity aside because he was coming to Jesus. And what we're going to see is Jesus gave him a new identity. But I can think about as like the thing that's maybe holding us back. The thing that we place our identity in. Maybe I'm a CEO. I'm a lead pastor. I'm a mom, I own a business, I'm a runner, I compete in CrossFit, whatever that, maybe it's a negative, hey, that's the person who is anxious all the time, that's the person who's been hurt all the time. What is that identity that we need to throw aside as we come to Jesus? And like Bartimaeus, he threw his cloak aside because he was coming to Jesus. And this is what we find in the next verse. He says, go, says Jesus, your faith has healed you. Because you believe I am who I am. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight. And I, what did he do? He didn't run off once he was healed. He followed Jesus along the road. New identity. Bartimaeus, the blind man who's been blind for forever, who always asked me for money coming into Jericho. A new man. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, can see because of Jesus. But what we find from the story is it would be so, it would have been so easy for Bartimaeus to just stay on the sidelines, to let that label, to let what people said about him, complained about him. It would have been so easy for Bartimaeus to let that keep him from calling out to Jesus, but it didn't stop him. It didn't stop him at all. And I want to ask you a question is, have you ever found yourself content being on the sidelines? Letting that label, letting that identity that you're a business owner keep you from coming to Jesus and letting him give you a new identity. Have you ever found yourself in that spot? Because Bartimaeus, he came face to face with Jesus and it changed him forever. It changed him forever. And where we're going today is very simple. When it comes to us as a church, It's when we place our trust in Jesus, when we choose to follow him, he gives us a new identity. He gives us a new purpose. And the question is, are we allowing that old identity keep us 
from Jesus doing something more, something with purpose in our lives. I'm not saying your life doesn't have purpose, but when you're a follower of Jesus, when you trust him with every part of your life, he gives us new purpose. He gives us new purpose. He gives you purpose in the local church. And that's why we're having this conversation because we want hope to live in and through us. But the question is, are you allowing hope to live within you and through you? Because again, Bartimaeus, he followed Jesus along the road. It would have been so easy to say, I'm going to tell my family. I can see. But he continued to follow Jesus in his new identity. And here's the reality. If you find yourself wanting more with your life, if you find yourself stuck in whatever situation you are stuck in, Make your way to Jesus and you will find what you're looking for through and by connecting to the local church. Because here's the reality. I want to share something from the the book of Colossians. It says, Jesus, he is the head of the body, the church. You hear that all the time. You say body of Christ. That's what the local church is. And again, the church is not about a building. The church is you. The church is you. And you say, Jesus, I want to connect with you. I want to move towards you. I want something more with my life. And what Jesus is saying to, to you is I've got something for you but it flows through my body. Because again, Jesus, Jesus is here in us. He's the head of the body. The local church is there to bring the hope of Jesus to our community. The closest someone in your workplace can get to Jesus may be through you and how you treat them. That's what hope living in and through us is all about. But the reality is, are you connected to the local church? Are you connected to his body? Because that's when you place your trust in Jesus. He gives you gifts. He gives you purpose. He wants to do something through you and specifically you. What he wants to do through me may not be what he wants to do through you. He's got a specific purpose for you. But you got to be connected to the body, which is the church, who we are. So another question, are you tired of sitting on the sidelines waiting for God to do something? I heard someone say the other day, I want God to do something. Well, maybe God needs to do something in you. He wants to do something in you. As he wants to do something through our church, it takes him specifically doing something in us. And as we're connected to the body, to the church, as we go out in our community, people are going to see it. People are going to see something different. People are going to see something that they want. But the reality is, I don't know if they see something they want by the way we live. And that's a challenge to me. That's a challenge to our team. That's a challenge to every single person in the room, every single person watching. What does it look like for you to get connected to the body of Christ, to the local church? You may be tired of doing things on your own. Over and over again, you find yourself in the same situation because you're doing it on your own. Make a move towards Jesus and watch as you get connected to him and to the local church, his body. Watch how he changes your life forever. Watch how he changes other people's lives forever. So what you are looking for What you're looking for is found 
Because that's where Bartimaeus found it. He came face to face with Jesus, the body of Jesus. And it changed him forever. And he continued following him. What you are looking for is found through being connected to Jesus through his body. That's why we give to this place. That's why we support with our time this place. Again, we are bringing the hope of Jesus through the environments that we create as the local church. So a call to action is stop going to church. Stop going to church and be the church. Rise up and step up and be the church because you're a follower of Jesus. And that's what Jesus commands you to do. Those of you feeling stuck and you don't know what you think about this place, you don't know what, you don't know if you believe uh, because what you see in Jesus followers is not necessarily what you want, but you found yourself here today. You don't know what you believe about Jesus. Make a move towards Jesus. Because a lot of times, hey, I'm I'm an imperfect person. I'm going to let you down. People are going to let you down. But as you make a move towards Jesus, he's not going to let you down. That doesn't mean your problems are going to go away. We're not a perfect place. All your prayers are not going to be answered. You're not going to be trouble free. That's not even biblical. He said you are going to have trouble. As you follow me, you are going to have trouble. But the reality is you're going to have strength with you going through those problems. You're going to have a person beside you going through those problems. As Powell said earlier, you're going to have accountability that's not going to let you go down the wrong path and challenge you to go the other way. Because you've done that over and over again. Again, the church is people, a group of people that are devoted to the things of Jesus. And so the call to action is stop going to church. Stop being a spiritual consumer and start being a contributor because that is what your Savior has for you. That's the purpose that he gives to you is for you to step up and start being the church. Start being the church. And we're not gonna, I'm not gonna shame you. We don't do that here. We're not going to beat you over the head. We don't do that here. But as you connect, as you follow Jesus, we love you enough to not let you stay there. So I'm here to tell you, if you've been here for a long time, stop going to church and start being the church. Because you have specific gifts. You have specific purpose that God wants to unleash as you start being the church. As you start being the church. Again, that is who we are. And as people experience the hope of Jesus that lives in this place that lives through us is through the environments we create. It's through the environment that is what it is when they interact with you as a Jesus follower in the workplace, on the ball field, wherever it is, wherever it is, hope lives through you. Because what you've experienced in the environments of this place. So here's what my challenge is. Again, three mindsets for a better year last week. Being intensely devoted to the things of Jesus, to the practices of Jesus, to what he commands us to do. To be irrationally generous And unapologetically share the love of Jesus. That is what we are here to do. What would it look like if those mindsets 
flowed through us. It would change our worlds. It would change our communities. It would change our workplace. But as we hope for people to experience Jesus and the hope of Jesus in the environments we create, it's gonna take you, take you getting off the sidelines. That's what it's gonna take. For you, if you call this place your church, is get off the sidelines and use the gifts and the purposes that Jesus has given you to make this place unbelievable because that's what it's gonna take. It's not just gonna be me. It's not gonna just be our staff, the volunteers. It's gonna take everyone, everyone. Because again, there's people in the room that need to come to Jesus. They're tired of being stuck. You're tired of being stuck. And that's your priority. It's like, hey, we want you, before you start being the church, you got to come to Jesus and let him change your life forever. Quit doing life on your own. Quit doing life the way you've always done it. And allow Jesus to give you a new identity, a new purpose. And for the rest of us, we got to get off the sidelines. So my challenge for you this year, for one year, one year, get off the sidelines and start doing something. Start doing something. Quit just watching online. Quit just coming in this place and sitting in a chair and then leaving. Start doing something. And I don't tell you that just because it's what I want. It's who we're supposed to be as Jesus followers. For you to just come in this place and listen to a message and leave, that's not the purpose that Jesus wants for you. He's given you specific gifts and he wants to use you in specific people's lives to draw them to Jesus. Because again, the closest the closest that someone can get to Jesus may be through you. I may not be able to influence the person at your workplace, but the way you're treating them, it's you that Jesus wants to use to invite them to this place, to be a part of the gathering, to where we worship together because of what he's done in our lives. It's all about him. That's what this place is for. Not just to come and to leave and then to go to lunch. So for one year, one year, I want you to get off the sidelines. If you want to be a part of this place, get off the sidelines. And again, it's going to be unbelievable because here's what's going to happen. People are going to go from death to life. People who are in a dark place, light is going to come in their lives. And they're not going to know how to explain it, but it's you. It's you because hope is living in you. It's going to flow through their life and they're going to experience and as they're in a dark place, they're going to experience light. People who are defeated, they're going to find purpose. People who are fearful are going to start having faith that God can do something in their lives. People who are, who are shackled down with bondage are gonna be free because we decide to follow Jesus and to be intensely devoted to him and we are so focused about getting off the sidelines because that's who we're supposed to be. Jesus is the head of the body and as we follow Jesus, as we place our trust in him, He gives us gifts and purpose to be a part of his body, the local church. And he uses the local church. He said it was going to be the one what changes the world. Not whether or not our country is okay. Not whether or not we have a successful business. But no, as we follow Jesus and model and allow that hope to flow through us, He starts changing lives. That's what this place is for. That's what we are here to be for this community. 
that we want hope to live. Hope to live in us and through us. So what does it look like for you to get off the sideline? God may be speaking to you right now. You know exactly what you need to do. You've been thinking about it. Or maybe just here in this moment, you're like, I need to do something. I need to be a part of the local church. Well, here is your next step. Here's your next step. As I pray, before you get up and leave, I want you to get out your phone and I want you to go to our website, wiregrasschurch.org. And I want you to take a step and say, you know what? I'm coming to the Wiregrass, Discover Wiregrass Dinner. And not just to make us feel good because we don't have... I want people who are committed to being the local church that are rising up and saying, you know what? I want to change our community and it's going to happen through us as I'm accountable to other people because of what Jesus has done inside of me. What I've seen him do in my life this past year, I want that to flow through me to every single well, everybody else. And the reason why I want you to sign up for that dinner is because that's where we're going to decide what the best place for you is. You may say, you know what? I don't know what the gifts God has given me. We're gonna talk through that. We're gonna talk about what does it look like for you to take a step, to take a step and start being the church. Go sign up for that dinner. But if you don't wanna wait that long, because again, that's 28, is go to the next steps table. Powell and Monica will be out there and we'll get you started next week. But again, with hope living here in us and through us, it's gonna take you getting off the sidelines. And I just want you to imagine what God is gonna do with a group of people who are committed to him and are taking a step and saying, God, I want something more. I want something more and I want you to use me. Watch what he does. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you. God, thank you for your power, power that flows through your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you for your son who gave his life, who was willing to give up his life for me, for those who need to come to you. They're tired of being stuck. They're tired of living life on their own. God, give them the courage and boldness to move towards you right now, today and place their trust in you. And for the group of people that need to get off the sidelines, God, I pray that you will show them through your spirit, God, show them that they are here for purpose. God, you have something specific that you want to use them to do and give them the boldness and courage to do it. God, we ask this in your name, amen. Hey, thank you for being here today. Hope to see you next week. Uh, and again, if we can help you with anything, I'll be down front. Uh, Powell will be out at the next steps uh, table with Monica. Uh, we hope you have a great afternoon.